What happens when two seasoned business leaders get together? They talk shop, of course. Sit back and listen in as Scott DeLong and Vince Moiso share from their experience around current issues facing executives, entrepreneurs, and their leadership teams. The CEO Podcast starts now. Hey, everybody. Vince Moiso here uh, at the CEO Podcast with my partner in crime, Scott DeLong. Hey, folks. And this is episode seven, season yeah. two. And we've got uh, great feedback from from several listeners recently on on topics, and and this is this is one. This comes from uh, Kendall Trinary, who I've known for a, a long time, and uh, we've worked together uh, for for a number of years. and And she just said, you know, she's 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 young and and she's educated, and and she's coming out of out of uh, getting her master's right now, and right. she says. Hey, what is it like? What is the pathway like? What is the what should should you know those people that are coming out of college that you know want to enter the workforce or want to become an entrepreneur? What does that pathway look like? And you know what what recommendations do we have in things that they can do to start their journey to entrepreneurship? So, so I I see two really quick. The first one is jump in, go for it, right? <laughs> yeah. And which a lot of people do. Sink or and, swim. And then I see, in, in fact, there's there's a lot of people that will that will talk about that. Uh, don't put too much into it. Get started and see what happens. Yeah. And then there's one that's a little bit smarter in my mind, which is the the preparation that that one should do before they they uh, get into entrepreneurship. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let's talk more about that one yeah, first, because yeah. th- there are some people that, that get in there, they have an app, they build something or some t-shirts that they made, and they just make a killing. Th- yeah. And that happens. But, but those are more of the statistics that say businesses don't last five years. Well, entrepreneurship is seeding early, you know, so, so a lot of colleges now will have a school of entrepreneurship within their business school, yep. where I think, you know, traditionally you go back a de- you know, several decades uh, that, that wasn't as prominent, you know, so most business schools were your more traditional business schools mm-hmm. teaching on very traditional topics. And now you've got incubators that are built within these, these business schools and they're really, really uh, teaching early on uh, the seed of entrepreneurship, which I love. So my alma mater, University of San Diego, is one of those. So they, they have, um, you know, through, through a very, very generous uh, grant from, from a family uh, they have uh, radically expanded their business school, and it includes um, really a thriving school of entrepreneurship. And now within that building, there's going to be a, a specific incubator uh, section that is just all around entrepreneurship. And in Orange County, there's three. Cal State Fullerton has has an entrepreneurship program with, within that. Yep. Chapman, which is what where I yep. taught yep. Uh, in the entrepreneur program, the, yep. the Leatherby Center of Entrepreneurship. Yep. And then UC Irvine mm-hmm. uh, with with a gentleman named Richard Sudik that took he, he actually launched Chapman's Entrepreneur Center and then went over to UC Irvine with their massive resources yep. and built this tremendous program over there. So there are a lot of places to learn this while you're still in school. Um, well, talk- and tap into it as, as an alum. So like even if you're graduating. Oh, so, yeah. So oh, ultimately yeah. what I was getting at is they've encouraged, I, I, I talked to the dean of the business school and he was really encouraging me to be active within the business school mm-hmm. so that... Uh, uh, you know, uh, budding entrepreneurs could tap into, you know, my own experience if they want, or, you know, tap into my network as, as, as an alumnus. And I think that's, that is definitely true. So I've been involved in, in Chapman's entrepreneurship, uh, program, uh, in, in the past through entrepreneurs organization. And, uh, that was, you know, previously a nice little funnel and, mm-hmm. and used as a, as a very, very regular venue and I think, you know, so what immediately came to mind to me was, first and foremost, look at the resources that you currently have, right? So yeah. I guarantee you that your business school, your school that, that you're associated with is going to have some sort of program that you could tap into. Uh, secondarily is is tap into that network and and specifically the, the network of, of, of alumni for, for that particular school. And then lastly... I know, I mean, I sure as heck didn't have this back when, when I was school going back 25 plus years ago is, you know, now they've got this, you know, full blown career center 
And, you know, at University of San Diego, they've got this higher USD program, right, where you've got, you know, uh, alumni-owned businesses that are, that are you know, tapping into for the, the talent that's coming out of the University of San Diego, and, and they're really pushing for those hires to happen. And so that's happening across a lot of campuses. And so I think, you know, first and foremost, just check the resources that you have available. And you don't even need to be an alum necessarily mm-hmm. to, to, yeah. to d- dig in. I, I know when... I'm working over at, at, at Chapman, the Entrepreneur Center, welcome the community as well. So for, for those of you already in business and doing that, there's mentorship opportunities. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. even some teaching opportunities. How we got that relationship with EO was I asked for some space and then I asked, what can we do? Yeah. And they brought me into a classroom. So I got to be assistant professor for a yeah. while and eventually ended up taking over teaching. Ah, teaching a great course. space. It's, too. What is wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So yeah. can we talk a little bit about the type of course that, that we taught? Yeah. Um, so it, it, was, it was a business course, Management 365. It made no sense in that at all because it wasn't in the business school. It was off campus in their entrepreneur center. Yeah. And it was um, entrepreneurship, the beginning of entrepreneurship. And there's a, a great resource that, that we use as a textbook, actually. Uh, Steve Blank and Bar- Bob Dorf uh, from up, up north, um, Berkeley, um, Berkeley, I believe, is where where they where both these gentlemen are. Wrote a book that's called the Startup Owners Manual, mm-hmm. and and what it did is they had something that 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 called this business model canvas, and and there's seven categories within this business model canvas, and each week we worked on one of those models for the for the for the student. Yeah. Um, what's your idea, right? Where's your idea? Yeah. What's your market? Yeah. Um, all of those kind of things. And then we went back and made the students go out and prove. The biggest thing that, that we got out of, the, out of the course, besides a system, you could use any system. You can use, you can use EOS. You can use this business yeah. model canvas. You can use any of the systems. Yeah, yeah. They all work. They're all good. Yeah. Um, what this course did is it got the students out of the office their desk, wherever, where they're thinking about these ideas and into the community, talking to the people who may potentially be users Mm -hmm. of their product. Find out. How do you validate whether or not your idea is any good? Get your butt up and get out and talk to folks. Yeah. I mean, no better way. And that was the hardest thing to get the students to do. Yeah. They, They had brilliant kids. They had these ideas. But to go face somebody and say, you know, hey, I've got this product or, right? So one of the things we ended up doing, and this is this is great for any young person. Hey, I've got a college class, and they've asked me to come and interview a few people. Yeah. Start with that. There's not there's not a 40 year old, 50 year old, 60 year old in the world that'll shut you down when you say, Hey, can you help me? I'm working on this class. Well, I'll take that a step further. So uh, I got my my master's in business administration from Cal State Fullerton, and, and you mentioned Fullerton. Fullerton has an excellent, excellent MBA program. In fact, I, I underrated as far as I'm concerned. Their, their Mahalo School of Business, I, I think, mm-hmm. is, is a really, really great school. I'd encourage anybody to check it out. What I jumped into during uh, the, the, the curriculum was uh, they had an opportunity for students to get together. You take a class and you, you get assigned to a group. And then local businesses will hire you as a group of students to come in and assess yeah. and ultimately consult for yeah. the business. Yeah. So they present an issue or something that they're trying to come up with, whatever that is. And then um, they kind of give you all of the data around it mm-hmm. and then let you do the research and, and come, come back with a, a recommendation. That was humongous. Uh, one is, is it exposed me, just that real world experience mm-hmm. exposed me to a lot of different things. One of which I, 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 I think back that, that, that undoubtedly was, was uh, one of the first times where I really understood, wow, I, I like to consult. <laughs> I like to coach. I really, really enjoy that. I like research. You know, I like to do these type of things. I like the challenge of solving a problem. That was great discovery for me. It also created a relationship. So yeah. I still have relationships with that group today. I still have a relationship with that business today. I was going to say, not, not yeah. just the group and the people within that group, yeah. but the business that you're working with there yeah. as well. Yeah. And then the stories, which may get you involved in somebody else's business. The story that you told about this group in that business yeah. might get you another customer yeah. in your consulting practice yeah. as well. So so we're, we're both high on education. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal to us. 
There are resources in Orange County. There's three. San Diego, there's probably four down there. University of San Diego, UCSD, uh, San Diego State at least, and maybe Point Loma. I'm not sure. But there's at least three down there as well. Mm -hmm. And if you go to any county, you're going to find universities that will, will want to help. Whether they're executive education classes, if you're not already an alumni and take some courses, great, mm -hmm. do that. Um, but that really doesn't get to the heart of Kendall's question, right? Yeah. It is it's preparation for that and things we we highly recommend that you do prior to deciding to be an entrepreneur. But let's say you, you're ready to launch, right? Here you go. I'm I'm out of school now. What do I do? Yeah. And and there's a couple pathways there you and I discussed prior to this. So I think the first one is jump in, become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Go through this process we were talking about, seeing if you can validate your story. But you said, hey, there's there probably even a better way. So talk a little bit about your your path. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, that wasn't for me. Like I, I definitely was not at least. At least after my undergraduate, uh -huh. right? I, I definitely was not ready to just jump in. I, I there was no there was no scenario that was ready to launch for me, um, and I wanted real world experience. And, and I'm I'm a lifelong learner, and I'm you know my personality type is such that uh, I'm always better off gathering data. And then once I know, like, and feel comfortable, then, you know, where, where I'm, you know, at the level of almost expert at it, mm -hmm. then I can, then I can run with it. And so I took the approach of, of really working and gaining that work experience and gaining leadership experience and going to work for other companies before I made the entrepreneurial leap. Uh, and then it was, it, it was in fact, after my MBA, when I made the leap to full entrepreneur. So I like that, that first pathway is go learn on someone else's dime. Yeah, I mean, not taking advantage of them. No, because not you're at all. working for your money. You're, you're no, earning. No, I worked. It. I worked but, hard and earned every bit of that. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't that. But I, I, I learned. I learned so much. I, I, in fact, I'm so appreciative of the experience that I had yeah. because I, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without that. I wouldn't know what I know today with, with without that experience. I've had mine was a, a little bit different. So while I was in, while I was in college, I, I ran a, a small business. Mm -hmm. um, I was a swimming pool cleaner. Right, it was a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful job. But I learned a lot of things about getting to getting to the customers and pricing and mm -hmm. scheduling and, and, and a lot of that that ends up happening. But when I got out of college, I went to I went to work. I, I went and got a regular job. In fact, there's a lot to be said about a regular job, not just the learning experience, but the white picket fence that can happen. It's safer. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more mm -hmm. secure. Mm -hmm. The third thing that I think is really important about getting that that second job and starting your venture while you're in your regular job. Yeah is learning how to work long hours. Oh yeah. Because it's not what you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> people say, hey, it's let's get up in the morning, easy. come up with an idea, throw it out there, let some people go to work and I'm going swimming or I'm going golfing or I'm going doing whatever. That's not what entrepreneurship looks like. In fact, most entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurial companies, especially bootstrapped entrepreneurial companies, yeah. bootstrapping means well, we're going to talk about this in a bit. Yeah. Where are the resources coming from? They're not mm -hmm. coming from VCs. Mm -hmm. They're coming from your own pocket, your friends, your family, your parents, all That's whatever right. whatever it might be. But it, the the average time for someone to really become successful in a bootstrap company is nine years. Well, in fact, nine years. In fact, I would encourage you to listen to our episode on bootstrap entrepreneurship. We had an amazing guest, yep. Josiah Lilly, who. With no formal education, you know, had uh, was was just the quintessential bootstrap entrepreneur who just totally jumped in at the age of seventeen years old mm -hmm. uh, and has never looked back. Has four businesses today uh, and is a serial entrepreneur and has been very successful at it. So, you know, there are many cases of that. So there's sure. no there's no right or wrong in any of this. I mean, I'm I'm sharing the way that I did it. Um, and, and I, I would encourage a lot of people to, to, to just gain that real world experience before they jump in. However, those are, the, you know, there are certainly, if you are totally inclined to entrepreneurship yeah. and you know what you've got is, is going to take you where you want to go, that's fine. And you know why? Because what Josiah did is he was smart enough to know, to surround himself with people that were smarter than him, that knew things that he didn't. And then when he learned to get a coach, he got a coach, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So he, he, he knew, great, he, that was going to get him so far, but he knew that he could get the help from other places. Sure. And so I think, I think that's, a, that's a good lesson to learn and understand is that 
the help is out there, right? The mentorship is out there. The coaching is so out another there. Another good reason to jump in too. I'm going to go back a little bit, but my easiest business was the one when I was 17 years old. Yeah. I didn't have nearly as much to risk. Mm-hmm. Right. There was no house. There was no yeah. wife. There was no kids. There were no any of those kind of things. The older you get, the and, riskier it gets. And, and all I needed to do is go make a few bucks so I can go do what I wanted to on the yeah. weekends. And yeah. that seemed to be an easy easy way to do it. Yeah. Could that business have scaled? Yeah, it could have as yeah. well. I yeah. certainly wasn't ready for that. Yeah. Um, however, um, what we're talking about right now, really, I want to get to back to Kendall's. Well, what? In, in, she didn't say this, but... How can I do it? What 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 can yeah, I do yeah, here? Yeah. I got an idea and yeah. I want to go forward. Yeah. And um, you know the the first thing I'm going to talk about is the uh, validating your idea, right? Before before you even put a dime on your credit cards, before you even uh, no go doubt. talk to your parents or your uncle or your whoever, your friends and family and all that to go to go try to get some uh, startup capital, is to validate your idea. And going back to the the startup owner's manual. Um, when you have that idea and you've thought through it completely, that's only a mind of one thinking through the idea. I can mm-hmm. fill out this whole canvas and lay it out to a bank and say, listen, you should fund this because of whatever. However, I have no idea whether the community is going to buy yeah. or not. Yeah. Go talk to them. Get out. Get out and talk to people and say, what do you think? Well, I, more, I and would say... help me. Well, I was, I was going to say, you know, go find... Uh, you. Uh, Chances are you know an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Like chances are you know somebody who owns a business. Go pitch them that idea, you know, and and get your get your pitch down. Like understand, here's my idea, and be able to think through it clearly, you know, and have as much uh, of of what's going to launch that yeah. as as you possibly. You learned it in school. If you took if you took the business courses. Yeah. Whether you know you're in an MBA program or even your undergraduate, or even the communication they, classes, they, you didn't do a business. They school. taught you how to write a business plan. They yeah. they they taught you you had to take if you if you're in business or especially if MBA, you took economics, you took accounting, you know, you took you took all those courses, right? So so you have the knowledge to put something very very fluid together to put in front of somebody. Get your pitch ready and go to an entrepreneur yeah. that you know. And test that test that idea. So the first thing, so you come to me and test it. The first thing I'm going to tell you is, cut your sales in half and double your expenses. <laughs> and is it still a business? Because that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Entrepreneurs are optimists, yeah, right? Yeah. So we think we can sell a million dollars worth of get gadget things, Whatever right? And and it's only going to cost me, you know, four hundred thousand dollars to make them, distribute them, yeah. uh, keep the lights on, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it's probably not quite that year one. You might sell mm-hmm. a half a million, mm-hmm. and it's going to cost you eight hundred thousand in order to sell that half a million in revenue. Exactly right. right? It's, it's just the, I don't know why that math works, but it does. Yeah. You're going to make half the revenue that you projected, and your expenses are going to be twice as much as you thought they yeah. were. Yeah. And if they're not, good for you. Well, right. and then ultimately, you know, you started to go down the path, Scott, of talking about money. So mm-hmm. if I need capital. And and I've determined what those capital requirements are going to be. Uh, so so some of that here's what I tell you because I think I think this is part certainly part of, of Kendall's line of questioning is uh, okay great here's where I think some people make a mistake is they say okay I've got this widget this great idea for a widget that I'm going to resell and the cost of this widget is five dollars a piece. Right. And I can go to China and I can get it. So I only need, you know, a full container of this is a hundred thousand dollars, and I only need a hundred thousand dollars. And yeah, yeah. yeah, there are so yeah. many ancillary costs yeah. that you're not determining that how, you've how got. How long are those widgets going to sit in that warehouse that you have to rent? Well, what about the rent? <laughs> yeah. And and so how much working capital do yep. I do I need to have, and for how long? Yep. Right. You know, the the rule of thumb could be six to twelve months, and then so, you could argue both. But but you know, and then there's there's additional costs, right? So, like, as you're importing something, you know, in that case, you're you're you've got import, you've got duties, you've got freight, you've mm-hmm. got all these other things. Now, okay, now I've got selling costs. I've got to turn around. What where are you going to sell it, right? You know, so so let's say I'm going to sell it online. Well, okay, I've got to create a website. That's oh well, maybe not. Do. I'm going to go on Amazon. Well, there's costs on Amazon too, yeah, guys. Right. So 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 my point is, is like you 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 have the knowledge to build that out. And you need to understand what the total capital cost is going to be. Now, once you've determined or at least estimated what the total capital costs are going to be, where's the money come from? And 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 I think that the, the the probably that first level 
is going to be friends and family, right? Usually is. Yeah. Yeah, it usually is. Or whatever you've saved up. Um, but if you're if you're young enough, that's nothing. Typically, that, that, probably nothing. Yeah. If you had a you know three thousand dollar line of credit on your credit card, you're using that first, yeah. because even mom and dad probably aren't going to give you a cent until you got some skin in the game yourself. You know, yeah. even mom and dad. Yeah. Right. We'll we'll probably ask you to put some skin in the game. Well, yourself. unless you're a tech startup, you mm -hmm. know, or you've got some innovative software or app, or you know, in that world, which is super hot for uh, angel investors mm -hmm. and other types of investors, you're 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 not likely to get seed money in in that way, and you're certainly not going to be able to go the traditional route. You know, you go to you go to a bank with with a business plan, and if you don't have any collateral or anything like that, you're not, you're not likely to get. So another good reason to, life. to go into the workforce for a while yeah. while you're not only getting educated, getting paid, you're getting paid, save as yeah. much as you can. Yeah. That's not a very popular term with young people yeah. to, to yeah. save their yeah. money, but yeah. save as much as you can, because my rule of thumb is you need to be able to support yourself, your, your own needs yeah. for at least a year without a salary. No doubt. In this startup business. If you can't afford to do that, you can't afford to take the risk. I agree. Right? And it depends on how bad you want it. You know, if you want it bad enough, you'll do what it takes to get there. Sure. Right? So there are lots of reasons to, you know, graduate, go get a job, learn from those people, and get out in the community, talk to other people about yeah. your ideas during that. Your idea is not going away. It can wait. I, I know there's people that say, launch early and, yeah. and, and, and fail fast and... Uh, yeah, okay. And how many times have you had an idea then someone else stole the idea, right? Yeah, that yeah. you didn't act on it. Well, that's because you didn't act on it. There's a difference between not acting on it and doing your research before, yeah. you, before you get started. Yeah. So uh, go get a job. Save your money. Start talking to people about your idea. Um, get the feedback. Adjust your plan. Mm -hmm. Go talk to more people. Get some more feedback. Adjust your plan again. And eventually you'll have something that you are not only proud to hand over to mom and dad first, but then take to the bank as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I've known entrepreneurs that, that have done just that. They, they did the friends and family thing, and the parents actually went and leveraged their own home to get the cash, yep. right, to go do that. You better be pretty secure in this process. Know what you're talking about. Being able to answer most of the questions that are going yeah. to be asked. Not You're not going to be 100%. But most of them, before you start asking people to, to give up their hard-earned money and just trust me, right? Just you, you know I'm good for it, right? All that. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> and <laughs> no, you better have more than that. And yeah, you I got retirement coming up to too. So it's just that, that's yeah. just it. Yeah. I've got I've got two things that uh, I think I can, you know, round out this discussion with that um, that I think we briefly mentioned at least one of them. And that is mentorship. It's mm -hmm. just go find a mentor. I mean, that's that's one of the easiest things that I think you could possibly do. Uh, I, I'm part of a mentorship program at, at University of San Diego, right? And I'm sure many, many schools and programs have this similar same thing where there's mentorship available to you. You should seek it out. Now, okay, aside from a program, I, again, I'm sure you know or have somebody in the family that is an that's entrepreneur that that you can find and just say hey would you be willing to mentor me throughout this process and and let them help you just let them experience share you don't need them to tell you what to do what you what you need is to just leverage their experience and take that knowledge and and then ultimately make make it your own so we talked about friends and family as a source of, of funds mm -hmm. but if you if you and, and i'm not trying to be manipulative here when i talk about this but if, if, if you're my uncle, right, and, and I know you're good at business, and, and I come to you as in this humble approach to mm -hmm. ask you to mentor me on this mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. pretty good chance after a year and a half of mentoring me, you're going to be my first investor too. Yeah, most you likely. Put all, you've already put the time and the effort into giving me your experience and your yeah. all of that, and here's a couple bucks to get started too. I want to partner with you. Because you've got the energy, I've got the knowledge, you've got the energy That's right. concept. So friends and family are a great place to go to get the mentorship as well. You don't need a university. If you're intimidated by that, fine, yeah. don't do that. It could be the business down the street. Let, let's say you've um, uh, got this kind old person that, that's run this business down the street that you've you know 
hung out with once in a while and yeah. checked in on and all that. That person wants to mentor you too. We don't want to die with the knowledge we have. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. We want the young people to learn and grow and do all that. And we're f- willing to give it away freely. I'll tell you what. I, I Sometimes we, you just made me think back. I, I, at least I, I can speak from my own experience, but I, I think from how it occurs for me and other families that I see, I think we overlook the talent that we have in our own families. I mean, my, my brothers, I think back when I was younger, you know, and I'm separated by a decade being the youngest of five and I've got incredibly talented brothers and sisters. Yeah. And, and then I look at, you know, now fast forward and all of their kids who, you know, uh, many of which are in their thirties, a few in their forties. And they're 40s. talking to you about business. Man, and and right. they are, yeah. but, but they're equally talented yeah. And I found that in mentoring them, I'm learning as much from them as they are from me. Like it's just, it's been an amazing kind of rediscovery process, even for me. As as my my, my brother in law is is an incredible bootstrap. Uh, you know, he's not an entrepreneur. You know, he worked for somebody. You know, for for the better part of thirty years. Mm-hmm. But man, self made all the way up to president level. I mean, just the guy was driving a forklift to start in the business and. And uh, so you talk about bootstrap, that can happen equally. You know, Kendall's question was equal, you know, not just entrepreneurship, but jumping into the workforce. And and I'm here to tell you that that can happen. There's a path that that you can take within the workforce too that can get you to a high level. And, you know, uh, just talk about that for one second. Uh, Don't diminish hard work, guys. Whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you jump into the workforce, uh, I, I think sometimes hard work gets diminished. Don't diminish it. Hard work will take you far. It's it's not going to take you all the way. I mean, it, you know, you've got to learn leadership. You've got to learn these soft skills. You've got to learn a lot of other things because um, hard it's not just going to be hard work alone. And hard work needs to stick with you like that. Right. That level of discipline, if that sticks with you throughout your life. Uh, in my opinion, you can do anything. So let's talk a little bit about partnerships then because I'm going to be good at certain things and there's going to be some things I'm not as good at. Yeah. You know what? There's someone that's just the opposite of me in that. Yeah. And so my second business was like that. Um, A friend of mine, and and he was a really good friend, that had this business and he had no clue on the sales, the marketing, the structure, any of that. But he was really good technically. And... um, and we just formed a partnership between the two of us. Mm-hmm. Your technical skills and, and my uh, administration type skills yep. blended. And for the most part, it worked out great. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some overlap where we both thought we were pretty good at something. And, yeah. and, and good. And, and that's all right, too. Conflict's not a bad thing. Having a discussion about your idea and my idea, we'll probably come up with something better yeah. if we're open to that. Yep. But the partnership opportunities are available as well. The downside of partnership opportunities are they're harder to get out of than your own gig, right? I can tell you all about that. Yeah. Um, they're they're definitely harder to get out of. They're very similar, and I've said this before, they're very similar to a marriage. It's going to cost you just as much to get divorced from a partner as it is to divorce from a spouse. Yeah. It's going to be just as emotionally draining to leave a business partner as it is a spouse. Well, I will tell you, you know, there is going back to the whole thing of jump in, right? And and I jumped. I've 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 only, you know, almost only been uh, in partnerships, right? Mm-hmm. In, in my previous business, uh, and now in my current business, right? And I I just I've learned tremendously. I certainly learned tremendously from my original partnership and. And uh, that's okay, right? Like you know, is you've got to even the negative learning. Sometimes, the yeah, things we yeah, don't want to become yeah, even. Yeah. You, you know, sometimes you've got to just experience it. So I'd love to tell you there's some just magic solution on what to do, and sometimes mm-hmm. you just have to jump in, like you started mm-hmm. off saying. You just have to jump in and and experience it for yourself, and then uh, you can take those next steps. So like in my current partnership, as I've shared with you, I couldn't ask for a better partner. I mean, it's it's where where. where uh, I'm weak, he's strong. Where he's weak, I'm strong, right? And so we really, really well, feed off that. There's something and, else in addition to that as well is 
between your first business and this current business and mm -hmm. the partnerships. Mm -hmm. Finding the right partner is good, yeah. but there's a maturity level that's helped you totally, too. Totally, yeah, yeah. There is, for both, for, for both you and your partner. No question, um, no question. You, you're both mature individuals now, or yeah. all three of you are all mature yeah. individuals, and know your lanes, yeah. and know where we can battle, and know yeah. where all that. So yeah. uh, partnerships are, are, are difficult, and they're beneficial. It, just nothing else like I say about that. They're just they're good and bad, just like everything else. There's no no silver bullet. There's no magic uh, to it. It takes work. Well, I'll tell you the last thing that I throw in here, and arguably the most important, and I can say it in two words: just ask. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think you know if you if you take away anything from this podcast, it is uh, if you want help ask for it. If yeah. you want mentorship, ask for it. Uh, if you need money, seed money, you know, for something, you got to ask for it. As right? hard as it is to do that, the answer to every unasked question is no. Right. Yeah. Well, what, what's the risk? Well, yeah. there, there's potentially some risk in some of the questions that you're going to ask people, but if that risk is worth it, you got to do it. It's, it's not going to happen on its own. No. I mean, you know, whether it's entrepreneurship it's finding the job. If you think that it's just going to come to you, it's not. It's not going to spontaneously happen. Growth within a business, growth within your own business, it doesn't spontaneously happen on its own. You, you just you got to get there, and it starts by by asking. Uh, so I think I think an important takeaway right now is 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 just ask. Well, and I think I think even more than that. I mean, the answer could be yes immediately, but I think be receptive to listen mm -hmm. with humility to the answer to the question that you're asking. Yeah, absolutely. Let's say I came to you and asked you for some money and yeah. you didn't think I was ready for it. No. You wouldn't just say no. You would say no and give me some advice along the way. Oh, no. I would just say no. That, it, you might, that, <laughs> that advice might be tough to hear, but you're doing it for my benefit. You are telling absolutely. me that to yeah. help me. Not to be a jerk. And often it's a no now, no for now, right? Yeah. You know, and, and, and so you've got to listen. It's a no listen. forever unless you ask again. Right. Once you like, give me your advice and I follow that yeah. and I show, I prove it and show you, ask again. Listen. All right. So yeah. what I heard was just ask and you said, listen. Listen. <laughs> those yeah. are, those are, those you, are You can't just ask the question and, and, and lip service, right? So yeah. you actually have to listen. That doesn't mean the, 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 the answers that everyone will give you are going to be right or right for you yeah. they're not yeah. but it's more data that you have that you can that you can put into the, the shared pool of knowledge so that you can get smarter yeah so that you can reject it completely adjust it accept it completely it doesn't matter what you do with the information yeah. but if you just take if you take an excel spreadsheet and you say oh, i'm just not going to count uh, columns d e and f what's your answer going to be your answer is going to be wrong Right, I gotta at least account for the for the data that's in there. So so take a look at that data that, yeah. that these folks are giving you. Yeah. They're they're doing it usually with good intention, and and really trying to help. Especially if a younger person asking an older person. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I can't sit stress that enough. We want to help. Yeah. We don't want to die. Yeah. With what's in our head. No, no doubt. Yeah. Well, as always, we love getting fa feedback from our listeners. Kendall, thank you so much. Great topic. I enjoyed that one. That's yeah. uh, um, there's a lot in there, and in fact, we could keep going. Uh, there, th there's there's so much more to talk about. Um, I think you know there there were a couple of things that we were talking about even before in preparation for this podcast that hey you know could lend itself to a part two sure. even. So uh, we, we want your feedback. So so let us know if you've got any questions. Uh, for, for, for either one of us, you can check us out at theceopodcast.net. As always, uh, listen in on Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, and other, other channels. Uh, check us out on YouTube. If you go on and just search The CEO Podcast, you'll find us on YouTube as well if you prefer to watch versus, versus listen. And uh, anyways, we appreciate you listening in as yeah. always. Until next time. Well, until next time. But one last thing I want to just finish with this. And Kendall, I hope this helped. I'm sorry we couldn't give you the formula because there isn't a formula. There isn't a formula. <laughs> right? So uh, you, you got to get out there and experience life. Just, uh, absolutely. And give it, give it a shot. Absolutely. All right. Well, I thank agree. you all. Um, hope that you uh, watch. Hope you listen. Hope you give us feedback. We yeah. really want the feedback. This, this conversation would not have happened had it not been for Kendall asking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just so, ask. Thank you. 
All right, take care. We'll see you at the next one. All right, bye. Thank you for joining us for the CEO Podcast. Please visit us at theceopodcast.net where you can learn more about our co-hosts and listen to past episodes. If you would like to have a discussion and dive deeper into any topic, there is also an option to contact Scott or Vince to schedule some time with them. Thanks for listening.